put your camera on a tripod and press the shutter. You have now captured an image. Press the shutter one more time and scroll back and forth between those. You might see some change. Then continue taking pictures. And that's how we create a time-lapse. But that's basically the same way you create videos. So why has time-lapsing become so popular? And why do some people dedicate all their time making time-lapse movies? What's time, anyway? Okay, Morten, you, you've been one year in South America. One year just to shoot a seven minute timelapse movie. And you have, you've been standing in the forest, it's cold, it's rainy, and you, you're for, there for a whole day just to shoot like one video clip. Yeah. Why does this fascinate you? <laughs> well, sometimes I wonder that myself. You have the days which are really bad and you're on top of a mountain, you are freezing, it's cold, windy, but it's just something about time-lapse that fascinates me, which is about changing the perspective of time. You change the time in a way that reveals things in nature that you can't see with your naked eye. It's a different way of seeing the world and uh, it's very fascinating to me. Why can't you just film the landscape and then speed it up? Because that would be kind of the same thing. Yeah, you will get the same effect and you can do that technically. And But professional time-lapsers prefer to use still photo cameras. Um, because that way you can get a much higher quality image than if you use a video camera. Mm. Even with a entry-level DSLR or mirrorless camera or even a pocket camera, you can get 4K raw sequences. Mm. And that gives you a lot more flexibility in post because you need to do quite a bit of post processing on time lapses to make them look smooth. One of the reasons you started with time lapsing was that you had uh, a really crappy camera. It was bad at video. I, yeah. I think it had video, but it, it was bad. Yeah. And I like to do videos, so I started shooting time lapses. The time lapse is a very cheap way of getting really high quality video. The only way you can get 8K video right now is with the RED, uh, mm. and some more high end cameras are coming, but they cost like $50,000. Mm. Of course, people uh, they say, you know, why, why need 8K? Yeah, F full HD is enough to, to tell a story. And I agree with that, but. What do you think is the, like, the benefit with having 8K? I sell a lot of 8K time-lapse clips because now they're coming a lot of 8K TVs and mm. they're getting cheaper and the manufacturers, Samsung, Sony, they, they need uh, content for those TVs. And also you can crop a lot. Crop a lot, yeah. Because you do a lot of creative um, decisions in post mm -hmm. to tell a story. So maybe you thought, oh, maybe I should have had a little digital zoom or a little movement in this shot because that would enhance the story. And you yeah. can do a little bit of that in post. I would rather do it on set, but, yeah. ha um, but have the opportunity in post to do it is good. Yeah, yeah and it's, it's sometimes I walk up on the mountains for several hours and mm. I want to keep my bag quite lightweight. Mm. So I bring just one tripod, one camera, and one lens, maybe a quite wide angle lens, so I can shoot maybe at 16 millimeter. But then I know that I have the opportunity to zoom in 200%. Yeah. So I also kind of have like two shots. I can also have one that's more like 35 millimeter as well. Mm. It 
requires you to have a tripod because you, have, you need the camera to be still, right? When you shoot 8K, you can see all the small details, so it's mm. very important to be accurate on set and try to have as little shake as possible. And you kind of don't want to do too much in post because it takes a lot of time. And especially yeah. if you don't have the uh, a ten thousand dollar computer it's it's gonna be slow the only time you can actually not use a, a tripod is if you want to do a hyperlapse mm. where you could move the camera for a long distance then you can sort of uh, move uh, yourself and take a picture and move yourself take a picture mm. that can work but usually a, a tripod will be necessary Uh, for the basic shot, you need a tripod. You can't shoot really handheld. So that made a lot of time lapses look quite static. Adding motions in post is one idea, but of course, doing it on set is the best. So that's why they introduced uh, motion control in time lapse, where you have uh, an engine which moves the uh, the camera along a slider or mm -hmm. like a dolly very slowly. So then you get a nice smooth movement mm -hmm. in the time lapse. I've shot a lot in the forests, and there isn't a lot of things changing there. Mm. So you can have this nice movement. Yep. It creates a, a depth in the image. You can separate the foreground and the background. Mm. Um, it just gives another um, dimension to your time lapses, which yeah. is uh, really nice. And the funny thing is that actually now we're using a slider from SERP. Yeah, with the, which is motorized. So there's no one standing behind the camera now. It's automated. Yeah, it's automatic. So. Yeah. yeah, and as you probably feel now, it creates a little bit of depth and a more interesting shot in a way. So SERP has been sponsoring you for quite a lot of time. Yeah, since about 2013 or 14, I think. So yeah. I've been using it for a lot of years. And now they wanted to sponsor this video so we can make it. And yeah, yeah that's why we need to show you this text. So this is uh, the motor I use. It's actually two parts. So we have the bottom part, which is a linear drive one that drives across the slider. Okay. And then this is the pan and tilt part. Okay, so that's pan and tilt. Yeah. yeah. And then this is uh, the Magic Carpet Pro, which is more for video use and inside in studio. When I'm outside, I have a lighter one, the, the carbon fiber one. It's all controlled through the app on my, uh, on my phone. So I can uh, set keyframes, you can have it to pan in the beginning and then start driving mm. and then tilting in the end. and. Mm. Uh, it's quite flexible, you can do whatever you want. Now I'm talking with you, and since this is all, uh, motorized, I can now suddenly talk with myself. Hi Anders, how is it going? Ah, good, yeah, nice. And back to Morten. Hey. Oh, <laughs> so, yeah, it's quite a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> they use this wire, that's interesting. Yeah, it's a rope, actually. In the beginning I was a bit skeptical, but it, it works really well and it's easy to just extend it if you put it on an incline the tilt the slider oh, yeah, okay. it can slip mm. but you can also add just a, a counterweight okay so you can add another rope here yeah then it goes through this wheel right here oh okay and then you can add um, counterweights on the other side yeah have you done this before yeah yeah cool. all the time when I'm doing time lapse yeah can you extend this this uh, rates? Yeah, you just do like like this. Aha. Uh -huh. uh, and then you can extend as long as you want it, and you can buy a longer rope. The longest rope I have is 100 meters. I think. How is the uh, the maximum speed? Like this. So it's not like one of those robo robotic arms, which mm, is like yeah. super fast. But it's fast enough for most things that I would use, actually. So yeah. the cool thing is that you can set, uh, for example, a video of 30 seconds, go from A to B, and then you can do the same in time-lapse. 
uh, and then you can combine those two in post to so have like a VFX. Should uh, we test it out? Yeah, maybe we can yeah, test it out. That sounds really yeah. cool. I haven't done that before, mixing both time lapse and video in the same shot. With the motion control. Yeah, let's try it. Right now we're setting up uh, a slider shot with some keyframes and we're going to do two of them, uh, one at normal speed and one at uh, time lapse speed and then we're going to try to combine those two in post. Okay, I just made a quick test so we can see if it's good. <laughs> Yeah, it worked! <laughs> we just masked the two shots together. Everything else turned automatically, so... Okay, so you had an idea of having uh, the magic carpet, the big one, underneath. And then have this on top, right? Yeah. And then we, we can put have the camera here. Here, yeah. And then we can have a dolly movement or sliding movement out of the window. I, I don't think this is recommended by SERP doing this. Um, if you do this at home, be careful. And it, I don't think the, the warranty will, uh, will cover this. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like it's this, meant to be. This is nine kilos. Oh, yeah. And, and this is a few kilos and this is, yeah. So first we do the slow down with the window open. And then we uh, do it again, but the window closed and try to cut that together. So, are you ready, Martin? Yeah. Okay. It seems like more and more people are able to shoot time lapse because mm -hmm. you get that function in you know GH4, GH5, yeah. Sony cameras, uh, Blackmagic. So having a setup where you can both shoot time lapse movies but also shoot video, yeah, uh, it's a very versatile setup. So you, you can use it for quite different things. And if you are a bit creative, uh, you can get some really cool shots. And then I, I can mount this on, a, on a, another tripod now and get the, all the functions except the sliding. What I'm impressed of with this one is the, the counterweight or the, yeah. what do you call it down it's here? A, they call it the flywheel. Yeah. So when you take it off, it's more like yeah, yeah. this, but when you take it on, it's just a little push and you have it on. Yeah. I feel with this head, this fluid head and this uh, slider, I would feel really safe on set. That yeah. we will get smooth shots. Yeah. To ensure that the movements with the fluid head will become as smooth as possible, first mount the camera and then try to balance it. Now we can see it's too uh, back heavy, so I'll find the balance. There we go. And then we can gain the resistance in the fluid head so we get as smooth shots as possible. You know, when we tell stories in filmmaking, we uh, do things in certain ways, we light stuff, we use sound and everything. Yeah, it's easier to understand the story because we have more elements to put in uh, with actors and, and their lines and everything. 
can you t do, do you tell stories in your timelapse movies or timelapse can be used in a lot of different ways and a lot of the time lapse the focus in the timelapse genre has been to showcase beautiful landscapes so my last video was showcasing the beautiful landscapes of South America. You came with a good idea to have a, a message at the end that we need to preserve this mm -hmm. uh, beautiful nature. So just that small sentence gave it a lot more of a story, really. But I, I felt that in the video. I felt that message was told in the video. So in one way, there was a story there. I felt there was something, you know, building up the suspense and everything. But it was mm -hmm. more like uh, you have to um, imagine it yourself or you have to yeah, 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 create a story inside your head, you know. So yeah, it leaves space for thinking. Yeah. Definitely. Like my, I created a time lapse a few years ago called Seasons. So it was a whole year in Norway, where mm. the snow was melting, and you could really see how the landscape changes uh, throughout the seasons. Also, an important aspect of this is that you can mm. use time lapse as mm. part of a regular video. Yeah, we did that with the uh, On Thin Ice documentary. Yeah. That was actually the first time I met you. This yeah, was like five, six, seven years ago. Yeah. A friend of ours, Jörn. He made a skateboard uh, film on frozen sand and water, yeah. and I was documenting documenting the whole thing. For this documentary, the time lapsing really had an, played an important role for the story because we made a skate, skateboard ramp out of sand and water, and it had to freeze to become hard so they could skate on it. Yeah. And then, of course, we had to wait, and and you could see the nature and how it changed and how things got colder. So that was important to show. The, the kind of the, the time aspects. Yeah, and I think it would be very difficult to show that without the time lapse. But after all, the gear is just a tool to help you better express yourself. For me, Time lapse has become a way to show the beauty of our world to others, sharing my passion for our surroundings. In our busy lives, I think stopping up can be healthy. By changing our normal perception of time, we reveal the unseen, which changes the perspective. Things behave in a different way, our own bubble of reality gets challenged. In today's world, I believe that's increasingly important. This September you have a time-lapse workshop. Yes, in the Alps in Switzerland, in some beautiful landscapes. We're gonna have um, an expedition where we're gonna go shooting time-lapse together and it's gonna be a lot of fun. Sounds awesome. And you have a workshop too? Yeah, this uh, filmmaking workshop in June. We're going to make a short film together and yeah, teach and learn filmmaking. Yeah. And uh, we also plan to make a vlog series. Yes, uh, we're going to make a vlog series from this office about how we run this production company. Yeah. And we have all the material, you just have to edit it. Yeah, I know, I just and need I, to find I, time. Yeah. <laughs> because there's a lot of, uh, how to say, it's not that easy to run a production company. So we're going to show all the, the difficult things and the good things. And hopefully we can all learn. Yeah, right. and we're almost going bankrupt now because we bought an <laughs> aquarium. We spent all our money on an aquarium. I it's coming soon. Yeah, <laughs> well, you will see an episode. Okay. So subscribe to stay tuned to see the episodes and yeah. to see uh, Morten's workshop video. You can press somewhere here yeah. and uh, Morten's YouTube channel somewhere here and our filmmaking workshop video. And the Patreons too. Yeah, yeah. The, we have a Patreon page, so yeah. somewhere. <laughs> okay. Great. Um, yeah, we'll see you again. See you next time. Yeah. Okay. Hallå bra. Hallå.